So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and first up I hit 4,000 subs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you So yes, I hit the milestone of 4,000 subscribers uh, Last week end of last week. So thank you very much indeed to everybody who has hit that subscribe button um, and I did do the notification button and enjoys the content that I'm putting up on YouTube um, Really appreciate it. particularly thanks to um, Kaiser at modeling for advantage who uh, did a little shout out for me uh, on his channel on his community page Just to try and push me over the line and uh, certainly I've got a number of subscribers from there So if uh, you enjoy what I do and enjoy what I'm covering on my channel, which is basically what I'm doing in the hobby uh, Please hit that subscribe button doesn't cost you a thing um, just makes me feel slightly better about myself. <laughs> anyway, I really appreciate it. Fabulous. Um, I know everyone says the same thing and I'll do the same is that, um, I do this channel because I enjoy it and, um, it's never really expect the number of people to follow, um, and enjoy what I do because it's just me doing my hobby. Um, and clearly there's a lot of us out there because we all follow each other and we all enjoy it each other's journeys so what I've been up to let's take a look at some of the painting this week so I've been continuing along with the Indian mutiny figures um, almost at an end um, I think I've got a few that I bought on eBay but I'm not buying any more for the time being uh, these are some uh, more tribesmen to go along with the mutineers um, they are predominantly Foundry, War Games Foundry, I bought over Christmas during their sale um, and I think a few are Mutineer miniatures um, that I've added to. Um, they're the slightly bigger ones, you can see some are slightly taller than others. The War Games Foundry ones are lovely figures but they are slightly on the small side compared to other ranges these days. Um, I think that's largely because they're quite old. Um, but um, so easy to do, great fun to paint up, um, and uh, yeah, not much more to say about that. That's just a load of musketeers to go with the mutineers. So once again, um, some more mutineers. Now these are predominantly um, uh, War Games Foundry. Um, nice sculpts again, really enjoyed doing these. They're just so much fun to do, slightly different from anything else you do, and with the folds of the... Um, uh, of the clothes they're wearing uh, and the headdress they're wearing it, it just it's it's just crying out for it, even an average average-ish painter to do um, and I just really enjoyed doing them so that's that lot done um, so I think that's pretty much all the tribes guys I've got I want to do some more actual sepoys um, so wearing the, the the red jackets of the British troops that uh, swap sides and um, do more of those for this force because then they've got uh, a decent punch to any uh, army list I put together but uh, there you go another bunch finished so I think I said in one of my earlier videos or probably later videos of last year um, that I'm embarking on um, doing some Gallic um, troops for to fight some of the Hail Caesar Gallic uh, Caesar's Gallic Wars um, supplement games. Um, so I bought a whole load of um, um, Vitrix Celtic warriors. Um, I'm also frantically rebasing a whole load of old um, ones that I had in my collection from years ago um, that were all reasonably okay still. Uh, but just I wanted to put them, they're on in individual bases, I wanted to put them on bigger um, you know, group bases like these. Uh, and I also had some um, plastic Warlord uh, Britons um, that I picked up some time ago. I think, again, somebody was coming down the club clearing out some figures and uh, they were selling two boxes of them and I just thought they'll be useful at some point and here they are. Um, so there's still a few more to paint up, but this is the first lot done. Um, yeah, there, you know, a lot said about war, um, warlords, uh, plastic uh, Celts. There, they're okay. I mean, they're, they're actually, graphically, I think the, the the sculpting of them is really nice. They just are in some very odd poses, which makes them very difficult to mass them up um, in, in sort of what they sh in the in the sort of size they should be. So what I've done is combine what would be two bases 
um, in t into one and then sort of just spaced out the figures on them so they're not too crammed in um, and I think that works quite well so I'm not pleased with the effect um, Chichi painting with the uh, skin tone on these fellows they're particularly the uh, ones that are predominantly bare chested I've just um, uh, sprayed them with a um, uh, I think it's an army painter it's called Barbarian Flesh and I just sprayed it with that which is quite a pinky flesh colour and then just washed it with Agrax Earthshade um, and that's it um, and it just comes out with a really nice accentuates the models and the mus muscles on the torsos and the arms and whatnot quite nicely so um, and it's quick so there you go more and into the Gallic Wars not entirely sure where this thing came from but it's um, obviously a 15 mil Second World War pillbox um, and I just saw it in the uh, pile of opportunity and while I was uh, undercoating some stuff I just thought I'll do this and just uh, uh, paint it up so there you go <laughs> a pillbox 15 mil what more do you want so talking about 15 mil Second World War figures um, and really a thing that I should pay more attention when I'm buying stuff so these are 15 mil um, German Panzer ones now I wanted some Panzer a couple of Panzer ones to use for my uh, early war um, O group formations and um, I, I impulse impulse bought these I think they're Battlefront uh, Flames of War ones um, and I didn't really pay much attention to them because Panzer ones are Panzer ones right um, and then these arrived and <laughs> I think they're Panzer one J's which were actually late war um, recce tanks um, had much bigger um, wider than the Panzer ones from the early war um, so not really what I wanted um, which is annoying um, so I'm not quite sure what to do with them because I don't think I'm going to need them certainly not going to need four of them um, for uh, late for early war or even later war um, so yeah not sure what to do about them they also were unlike unusually for um, Battlefront a bit of a bitch to put together and you, can, you may be able to see the these sort of uh, I guess they're sort of mud guards or what have you front and back um, have to be stuck on individually and they've got little sort of holes on the on the resin um, chassis um, and pins to go in on the mud guards but they, they just don't seem to hold terribly well um, even with super glue I find uh, metal onto resin is quite challenging and when it's only got a very small contact area made it very hard and in fact the front ones have a sort of a slight overlap so they only have a pin one side and then they have a slight overlap which they're designed to sort of sit on top of the uh, the chassis there and I have to say they were fiddly as hell to get on um, a lot of swearing a lot of super glue and a lot of activator to, to get them to stick together um, probably made worse by the fact I realized I wasn't going to be able to use them in the games that I wanted to <laughs> so, uh, never mind not sure what to do with them I might just keep hold of I might try and sell them or I might hold on to them I don't know I don't know I mean I can I'm not that precious so I could just use them as Panzer ones early war Panzer ones even though they're yeah they're not but uh, ah the one they're done so I hope nobody thought that I'd given up on the Pike and Shop epic figures uh, even if I can't say them um, no I haven't I just uh, I've got attracted to doing some other stuff for the moment, um, but I went back this week and did uh, another battalion of Pike and Shot. This time, uh, these are Dutch um, Protestant forces. I just needed a break from them, and uh, as you have you seen, I've got masses to do, so um, you just have to keep refreshed, and that's what I've been doing lately. So um, these were done pretty much the same way as I always do them now. Um, base coat um, with a spray that is, uh, I think this was the Halfords uh, khaki, um, and then just um, picking out some various elements and then a good wash over the top. Uh, nice and simple and quick, and I think surprisingly effective, really. So um, another battalion out the bag. And then also um, some more Covenanters and friends. So uh, the command stand at the front is the Montrose. Uh, Warlord uh, resin 
um, stand um, which I put together and uh, used one of the spare um, standard Enzyme guys from the other sets to uh, mount the flag on um, and then the uh, the cavalry are the Lancers coming into Lancers um, look a little bit wet at the moment sorry uh, the varnish hasn't dried quite yet uh, in the recesses on that um, and literally just been finished so um, and a couple of the uh, well multi-barreled launchers and light guns that come in the uh, Covenant to set again kept it really simple um, just to get the boots on the table as quickly as possible uh, see what I've done there um, but quite happy how they've come out so they'll do the job and next, um, some more 15mm Second World War figures. So these are um, German field guns. I think they're infantry support guns, I think. I can't remember what they're called now, but they're part of the uh, Flames of War Battlefront sets you can buy. Um, you, if, o Group is what I play the Second World War, primarily, um, so far anyway. Um, and um, you don't really need artillery because they're an off-board uh, divisional asset that you call in from time to time so you don't really need these kind of models but they're useful as markers for when you've got um, off-board artillery missions in a in a scenario um, basically to denote how many you've got so you know if you've got two you have two models and you can place them beside your um, uh, company commander and then when they're used to remove it so you know you've only got one left etc um, uh, so again, I don't know what it is lately, the, the same with the Panzer 1s, um, I've struggled a bit with these models too, and, and primarily it's the, the guns were really hard just to get to stay together, um, even with, you know, judicious use of uh, super glue, I find them, uh, found them really fiddly, really fiddly indeed, and I wasn't happy with how they went together first of all, so I... Uh, had to break one of them apart and do it again and of course that damages the metal blah um, so don't know what it is maybe I've just been unlucky with the last couple because I love Battlefront stuff I think it's been really really good up till now but uh, anyway the effect's okay and so they're not exactly going to be frontline troops because I don't really need them for that but uh, uh, a useful token and then uh, next up some more of my Gallic Warriors for the Gallic Wars project Hail Caesar so these are well, predominantly they're Victrix uh, armoured ghouls with a couple of the Warlord ones mixed in too. Um, they're slightly smaller. Victrix are a bit chunkier as a figure, but I think it'll be fine from... I mean, you look at them very close here, so you can see the difference. I think when they're on the tabletop, you won't notice. Um, and, um, yeah, they were fun to do. They're, um, I'm planning to do a couple of uh, regiments of these, or maybe they'll just become the front ranks of various uh, barbaric war bands um, but again I've done them in the sort of doubled up uh, formation so there's uh, this is eight by four bases so sorry yeah 80 by whatever yeah so um, <laughs> eight by four bases and I think that it kind of works actually I think it works nicely so that's them done um, and they've got um, I think the little big man um, shield transfers on them because uh, I'm not going to be daft enough to try and uh, hand draw shields. No, no sir. There you go. And then finally for now, something a bit different for me. I don't really do diorama things, but uh, this is inspired by Tim's uh, Napoleonic uh, Wargamers event in June, where um, he's getting old. I'm planning to go up with... Uh, one of my Napoleonic armies and fight out some black powder games. Um, it's not a competition, it's just a gathering of uh, like minded, like minded uh, gamers who want to have uh, what's well, going to be four games over the course of a weekend up at Boards and Swords. Um, and I'm looking forward to it, very looking forward to it. So, um, as part of the um, sort of uh, objectives or games, I guess, um, scenarios that's what I meant. You can have a number of, or there's four different, it's four uh, different um, sort of boosts you can give your army. Um, there's um, caissons or sort of extra ammunition effectively that allow your guns to fire just once in a game, twice. Um, the um, there's a forge that helps um, things move quicker, um, and this one, which is uh, sword sharpener, 
which uh, if you use and you were you I think from what I gather you attach it to a specific unit um, and once it's used it's used and when you use the saw sharpener it basically re-rolls any misses for one melee one first charge so um, I thought that'd be a lot of fun to do so I picked up the uh, sword sharpener is from um, Eureka games um, the officer standing there waiting for his sword to be sharpened is a warlord metal French guy I think but he's wearing a great coat so he can be pretty much anybody now um, and the goats yeah there's a couple of goats there <laughs> are from piano miniatures um, I can't remember where the uh, tent came from, it was a 3D print um, and I just thought it was a bit of fun to put it together on the base so it looks like they're, you know, they've come out of their, uh, uh, whatever they've been doing in the tent to sharpen this guy's sword up um, to go chopping um, chopping wood merrily. And I put it on a big uh, MDF base with uh, Vallejo mud and etc. I think it's quite effective and quite pleased with how it came out. So um, for me as a non-modeller um, I'm quite pleased with the, the effect. So there you go. That is it for now. So gaming wise not been quite so busy um, mainly because I, I've been busy. Um, work. My boss was over last week. I had a couple of meetings with her um, which meant um, I wasn't around as much and um, I, as a result I actually missed my Friday gaming session because uh, I was up in London. Um, and didn't get back in time and actually ended up going out for a few jars with some of my team, which was nice. Um, so no games last week. The week before we did a uh, another game of the American Civil War game, was it hot, whatever it's called, Hot Lead and Cold Steel, whatever way around it is. Um, and I, I put it, I, I did debate, I did record it. So we paid, played one of the scenarios from the book uh, Perryville, I think it's called, a Kentucky game, um, and I, I did think long and hard about whether I would actually put the, the game up on the on the channel because it was a bit of a bit of a unsatisfactory game, shall we say? Uh, it was for a start, it was far too big. Um, we played it in fifteen mil. Um, we chose the game. Um, Actually, Jonathan chose the game because uh, we had uh, Tony and Paul playing for the first time, and we would have been far better keeping it smaller, um, especially at fifteen mil on a six by four table. This there were so many figures, and it was really hard to keep track of where regiments started and finished. You needed some counters to show the quality of the troops, um, any kind of differences they had with uh, equipment, that sort of thing, which made it all very confusing, and very messy. Uh, I'm also not convinced that those rules are ideal for a late, very large game. Um, I think they're okay for a medium or even a small size game, um, but I'm not quite convinced. So we'll give them another shot, um, but um, yeah, not quite ideal. Uh, what I did do, um, which goes into the purchases side of things, I did... Um, stop in at Beachhead the other weekend. Um, I dragged uh, Elaine down to Bournemouth um, and um, we stopped in, not for long, um, probably about an hour and a half, something like that. Um, had some lunch also while we were down in Bournemouth and then went to visit my parents who live not far away. Um, but um, it was nice. Beachhead uh, is, is kind of a nice little show and it's growing. Um, I haven't been, didn't go last year, but we went Two years ago, I think it was, and uh, which was pretty soon after COVID had finished, and it was quite small scale. Um, but this time, um, it, I was surprised how big it had become, and a lot of competition games, huge number of competition gaming going on, um, all different types, mainly weird shit, um, if I'm honest. But uh, from what I saw, anyway, I didn't spend a huge amount of time. The main gaming room where the where the um, uh, traders were was very busy when I was there on the Saturday. Um, lots of traders there, lots of good stuff. Um, some really interesting games. There was, uh, I'll show some pictures here. I can't remember all of them, um, but there was uh, a very, the, lots of rapid fire, um, some big D-Day type games um, of rapid fire, um, a couple of uh, very big Napoleonic games, including one Borodino one, which was absolutely spectacular um 
So yeah, some really interesting games and um, pretty busy. There was also a lot of weird stuff going on. Um, weird shit is a thing down in Bournemouth, clearly. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, brilliant. Um, broad church and all that as much as we can get people and there were a lot of young people there uh, gaming which was great and um, a lot of girls as well gaming which I think is also brilliant to see and hopefully some of those will, uh, will try out historical gaming and keep the hobby strong um, purchasing wise while I was there um, I popped along to I'm just going to note it because I'll never remember the name uh, MNC model paints um, check them out online discounts uh, available on most of what they do um, and uh, picked up some paints and also some uh, d10 dice um, because one of the things I realized is that uh, for for the ACW game you need d10s and I've only got a few so I picked up a couple more but also picked up a number of paints mainly um, AKs and uh, um, Vallejo paints um, but yeah check out his website um, also um, yeah I know I'm gonna get uh, crucified for this but I picked up a few more Janissaries uh, these are Perry uh, metals uh, so we got uh, Janissaries in campaign dress skirmishing a couple of packs of those and Janissaries in campaign oh there's another skirmish one and what's this one uh, attacking with pistols and swords Janissaries um, so I am going to do my um, uh, Janus my uh, Ottoman army Napoleon army very soon so I just haven't seen them so while they were there and um, yeah they were they were a lot cheaper than buying direct from the Perrys especially because of the postage which is getting a bit silly and because I've been enjoying doing the diorama type things I picked up um, this is the Perry French four-wheeled ambulance set um, from there and also um, this is the I think it's the British four-wheeled ammunition wagon which I picked up as well um, you'll have seen in the images I did the forge as well so that was another uh, purchase that came through um, which I really enjoyed doing actually so it was I was struggling to find out where it was and then actually Tim Napoleonic Wargamer um, highlight the fact Eureka do those um, um, sword grinding and I knew kind of in my head what I wanted a little sort of mini diorama of them sharpening a sword for an officer who was standing there um, and then um, I thought yeah I've got that uh, 3D uh, tent so I'll pop that on as well so and then just happened to have a couple of goats kicking around so they went on as well so yeah that was fun um, so I might do a few more of those um, I've got a couple of caissons coming because um, uh, General Darmay um, also seems to ha use caissons um, in the new version of General Darmay, which should be coming out very soon. Uh, I've got my pre-order in. Um, they've got um, some way of the caissons um, de denote um, some sort of optional extras within um I'm not describing it, but basically they denote an activity uh, that the CNC can do. Um, so I thought, well, I'll use a couple for um, uh, just sort of doing little mini dioramas, but also they'll play into when I when I use General Darme. So that's all to the good. Um, also down at um, Beachhead, so you know if you watch this uh, channel, I'm big into my Halfords uh, primer spray cans from the uh, car place. Um, but they've been going up in price a lot. They used to be a lot cheaper than than sort of model ones. Um, so I, I was there at the show and they had, um, I think this was uh, Great Escapes, was selling uh, Colour Forge paints, spray paints. So I picked up a couple just to try out, see what they're like. Um, so this is uh, Right Bone, White Bane, White Bone, sorry. And this is Ossified Earth. Um, they were ten ten pounds, which I thought when you don't have to pay any postage actually makes them quite reasonable. So I picked up those two to try out. So we'll see whether they replace Halfords or not. So I did a little shorts on this, um, but um, this book is awesome. This is uh, Graham Turner's War of the Roses um, picture book. I mean, it's more than that. It's a history book. Um, it talks about. Um, Basically, the causes and the um, activities of the War of the Roses, 
and is just supported by uh, these amazing pictures that Graham has painted. Uh, there's also a really good section, which I haven't finished reading yet, at the back um, about um, how he researches and does his paintings. Um, I did a quick flick through. If you're interested, have a look at the shorts on this. Um, I'll put the link here if I can on a short, but if not, look, look on my channel at shorts and you'll see this. Thoroughly, thoroughly recommend this book. I pre-ordered it, um, got one with his signature in the front, which is brilliant, um, and I'm really enjoying it. It's a good history book, but also, you know, the pictures in it are just extraordinary. So thoroughly, thoroughly recommend. Get it while you can. Um, what else? I think that's probably it in terms of purchases. Um, hasn't been ridiculous. I've got a couple of things coming, um, but they're not here yet to show off, so I'll uh, show them when I do. Um, but that's it for now. So thank you once again for everyone who subscribes to the channel. I so appreciate uh, you doing that. And those of you who haven't actually hit the subscribe button, please consider doing so if I've earned it on this video and any others. Um, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, you just hit that subscribe button. I think, like everybody, I notice on the analytics you can do that half of the people who watch my stuff aren't subscribed. Um, so, you know, could I be on 8,000 subs? Who knows? Anyway, I hope I've earned it. If, you, if I have, hit that uh, subscribe button. Let me know in the comments what you're working on. Um, and, um, yeah, thank you very much for all the continuing support. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out.